Hi. I wanted to show you our Pro Calendar for FileMaker 12. We're really excited about this because it takes a lot of the insights we had in FileMaker 10 and 11, a lot of the simplification and a lot of the speed, and puts it in a FileMaker 12 wrapper so that the layouts themselves are easier to work with, and in places the calendar gets a lot faster, in particular using multiple sources. Um, we've added a to-do list source to kind of show how that works here, which is pretty cool. Those events on the to-do list kind of roll forward as you work. but. Um, let me take a minute and show you kind of some of the things that were happening in the older calendars and some of the things that are new in, uh, in 12. Let's take a look over at this day view. Um, and you can see it's kind of a regular day view. We have the all-day events at the top. And then those events that have times, we're showing you kind of when those times happen. I'm going to hold down the shift key here and just make this event a little longer. I think that meeting is going to probably go till 2 o'clock. Um, and you can see that we have drag and drop now. We'll, um, we introduced that in 10 and 11. It's a little uh, smoother in FileMaker 12. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. but. Now know that that drag and drop isn't done with any plugins. This is just native FileMaker Pro scripts that you can paste into your own file. Um, while we're showing this kind of uh, complex day view here with these times down the side, we have a whole other option. If you want to see what we call a simple day view, we'll switch that over here. Now we're just showing those events as a list. This is a nice way to see things. You still see the color coding. We're uh, color coding these events by type, right? If I switch the type here, we're going to pick up some different colors. And that's all um, configurable by users over here, right? You can just drag different colors in. Um, but uh, this is a great view, especially for the iPad. We have some skins on here, some layouts that are particularly optimized for iPad. But uh, using the iPad layouts in this setting is particularly nice. And the same thing kind of happens over on the week view. You'll see now, instead of showing all the events at what time they happen, we just kind of show them in a list. And if I flip back here, you'll see what time those events actually happen, which is uh, it's kind of cool. Um, little red line here says that these events are overlapping. So if I click in this overlapping area, you'll see we see both uh, overlapping events come up and I can maybe adjudicate that conflict or make some decisions. These again are really simple layouts. If you drop in a layout mode, our customers are tweaking these all the time. They're adding new stuff onto these tabs. Again, just double click here. These are native tab controls You know, in FileMaker 12. Um, not a lot of hidden tabs or stuff you might've seen in our FileMaker 10 calendars. And we do have a simple contacts database here. You can see uh, Shuji is our contact over here. I can pick a contact uh, for this one and a simple projects database. We can jump out to that um, contacts file, which you can see back here. Um, this is probably gonna be replaced by a, a contacts or projects layouts you already have. But uh, it's nice to know that you can jump from an event in the calendar to that event's record uh, pretty easily. Um, let's look at the drag and drop a little more. You can see we have on the 18th here, we have two more events. Let's grab this bar and pull it down so that I can see some more events for that day. And again, you can configure this in scripts to have a default location, but so now I can see the rest of those events and I can put that back if I want. So that can help you kind of make sense of a day that's got a lot going on, but let's flip over to the month view and take, it a, day that's, take a look at a day that's got a really lot going on. I don't see really anything here in this month. Let's go to the next month. And see here, yeah, the 15th, we have, we have a lot more events here. You know, the other reason I wanted to switch over to the month view before we take a look at this day is take a look up here where it says seat code 12. This calendar is being hosted out of our servers in San Francisco. We're here in Seattle. Um, and I mentioned that because the calendar is pretty fast over the wide area network. Um, so fast that I can demo it for you hosted instead of pulling a copy down to my local machine. One of the reasons it's fast is that the relationship graph is really simple. We don't have a ton of portals here going to your events table. We only have one relationship to events, um, and it's pretty straightforward, right, just on IDs. So this is all that's required for the calendar. You'll add those table occurrences to your file. This is a sample, an events table you probably already have, or you could use our sample events table, just like you can use our to-do list. And then your events may or may not be linked to contacts, projects, and phases. But the whole thing is run off a pretty simple graph, which means it's easy to integrate into your file and it's, it's fairly fast. Um, so let's take a look at this busy day here, the 15th. Um, on first blush, that's a lot of stuff going on. Um, even with this bar moved down, I still have a lot of all day events. But if we move over to the schedule tab, you'll see that this gets pretty simple. What's really happening here is that we have a lot of events, but they're for different people, either different practitioners, you know, these resources across the top, could be practitioners, they could be pieces of equipment, they could be rooms, anything in your organization that needs to be scheduled. And we can use this view to kind of adjudicate these conflicts and I can move this event out of uh, example B, whoever that is, and over to Dr. Bloom so that we don't have conflict. The other thing we can do on these views is use some of the filters to kind of break the screen up. I can say, you know, I really don't need to see anything that's waiting. So let's see if I have anything. Yeah, so these two events are waiting. 
we'll just switch that to omit and now we'll see everything except the things that are waiting. And this can be very, uh, very useful if you want to just hide events of a certain type. Um, we also have a grid view that kind of takes the schedule and turns it on its side so you can see a lot more resources at once but less about each event. You can see the scale across the top here is by day. That might be nice if the things that you are scheduling are, are done in whole day increments such as um, rooms in a small hotel, um, maybe certain pieces of equipment, um, but a lot of people are going to schedule by time. This filters tab will let you change all that, right? Even changing the default time scale from 10 minutes to five minutes. All of this is so that you can see more of what's kind of going on with your events. Um, and if you really want to see more, let's just flip back to the month view for a second. We can um, remove this stat bar. Actually, before we do that, why don't I get rid of the filters and clear these filters. Go back a month. It's kind of a lot less going on. There we go. We can clear the stat bar. And now you can see with the stat bar gone, we actually have a, quite a, a big canvas here to show uh, a lot more for events. So the calendar definitely rewards a large monitor. Um, there's a lot of space here to show details about your events. And all this, all this detail, right? What's the, what's the description of the event? What shows up for a given contact? That's all configurable in our scripts and calcs. So I think you'll find a, a calendar here that's pretty simple but has a lot of power under the hood. Um, and is a lot easier to work with in FileMaker 12, and I hope you'll check it out. Thanks.